I want to show you the accounts receivable cycle in QuickBooks. Here we have the typical QuickBooks screen. Now I like to do things from this screen. You can also uh, do a lot of these items under the create invoices uh, screen over here. But I'm going to use the main screen here. Now it's going to start off by you creating an invoice. Now I want to show you that you can also go from an estimate to an invoice. So let's say you're making a proposal. You can make that proposal in QuickBooks, of course, and go from the estimate right to the invoice. Again, I could start on either one of these steps. Let's start making an invoice. Now, you're going to pick a customer. Uh, th this account is just set up uh, for a test for these videos. So let me set up a, a customer. I'll set up um, ABC Company. And then I'm just going to quick add that to my customers list. I can always go back into that for more detail later on. So notice that we have the date of the invoice, the invoice number. Now, if that... Um, if that customer had a name and address, the name and address would, be, would show up automatically over here. Now your items are what you're going to sell. And you can choose among your existing item list. Or again, you can add something here as well. So I'll say software support. And you, uh, I'm going to quick add this to the items list. I'll pick on yes there. And in this case, it's going to be a service. Uh, so you can fill in this information. What, what you really have to do on this screen for the item screen is if there's a rate for that, you can put that in. Although that's just uh, temporary. You don't have to use that rate when it really comes up on the invoice. What's really important here would be the GL account is going to be um, provided with. So I'll type in, um, let's say, consulting income. All right, that'll be an income account. So you set up the item if the item is not already there. I'll click on OK. So let's say it's going to be five hours of my time and I, I charge different rates, but let's say to this customer, I'm going to charge a hundred dollars an hour. And then it did the math for 500. Now one invoice can have multiple items, of course. So I can put more items in there and maybe for the customer message, I'll say, I'll say, um, this is a proposal based on our conversation. And then I'll pick on save and close to make that estimate. Now, in this case, it says this proposal is based on a conversation and that's okay. Uh, I'll pick on quick add right there. Oh, this is going to be the spell checker. So really, I meant to say conversation. So the spell checker kicks in as well. Okay, good. So I'll pick on save and close. Uh, it says, do I want to change the customer's billing address? And if I want to make that a permanent part of the billing address for that customer, I would pick on yes there. It just made the estimate. Now, let's say the customer goes along with that proposal and now I want to send them an actual invoice. Watch how we're going to convert the estimate to an invoice. So I'll pick an uh, estimate. I'll come over here and look what it says. Create an invoice. So I want to go back to the previous one. There's the one I just made. And on the estimate screen, I'm just going to come over here and pick on create invoice. The entire estimate has been copied. You can edit the invoice by maybe moving or edit uh, additional information. So now it just took that estimate right over to the invoice. So I don't have to retype any of the information, which is really great. Okay. So now the thing is, um, I can add more information to this invoice if I wanted to. I want to show you that um, I'm going to pick on the report over here that says view balances. And right now there's nothing in the accounts receivable, as you can see. The estimate doesn't kick off the accounts receivable. The invoice does. So I could add more items to this invoice, of course. I'm going to pick on save and close. And that just made the invoice. Now, if I run that report again, that's called view balances. Notice now I have accounts receivable. So the estimate can be converted to an invoice. 
but the invoice is the thing that will make your receivable. Now that's going to be on your receivable receivable report. Now you know how some people are going to pay late uh, or make a partial payment. That'll just be on your uh, receivable report until they pay it in full or until something else happens with that invoice. Now let's say we're going to receive a payment against that invoice. So I'll come over here and say receive payments. And now we'll pick the customer. So I'll pick an ABC company and it'll have the invoice amount. Now you know that some people are going to pay in a partial uh, in a partial way. So let's say they send a payment for $250. When I type in the 250 there, then you can put in the um, whether they pay by cash or check or in different payment methods. So I'll pick on they pay by check. Right? And now they're paying 250. The original invoice was for $500. So let's go ahead and save and close that fact that we received the payment. Now notice how the accounts receivable went down to $250. Okay. So you can accept partial payments there. That's not a problem. But when I do the view balances, you can see my accounts receivable is down to $250. We made the estimate. We converted the estimate to the invoice. The invoice is what created the accounts receivable. I can receive the payments. When I receive the payments, it decreases the accounts receivable. Now, if you notice, the next step would be to record the deposits. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, it's, it's not yet in the bank account. You see how my bank account has the balance of 98.75. Well, I'm gonna come over here. Let, let's say that check is now in my hand, but I haven't made the deposit into the bank yet. So I'll pick on record deposits. And then it'll ask you which payments that you want to work with. So I'll pick on that payment that we just used. And certainly I can pick more than one. I'm going to pick on OK. And now it's going to ask me which bank account that's going to go into. So I have the main checking account here. All right. And then um, it says undeposited funds. So when I'm done with this transaction, It'll take it away from the undeposited funds and put it actually into my bank account. So I'm going to go ahead and pick on save and close. Watch before I do that, the account, the um, my main account for the checking will will go up. It says 98.75 when I pick on save and close. That's now in my bank, and you can see the bank balance went up. So I just showed you the entire account's uh, receivable cycle. You could start off with an estimate. You don't have to start there. If you made an estimate, you can convert it to an invoice. A lot of times we'll just start with an invoice. That'll, that's the thing that'll uh, increase the accounts receivable. Then you can receive payments against that. Let's do another receive payment. And I'll use that same customer. And it shows the balance of $250. So if I check this, then it'll just put the remaining balance into there, as you can see. So I, uh, so I can check more than one if they paid for more than one invoice at that time. I'll pick on save and close. Now notice how that made the accounts receivable go down, but it still has a deposit to be made. So I'll pick on record deposits. We'll use the one um, that is ready to be uh, deposited, the one that just accepted. And then it's going to want to know which bank account that's going to go into. When I pick on save and close, watch how the main checking account balance will go up, as you can see. So I showed you the entire uh, accounts receivable cycle here in QuickBooks.